In this video, I'll be going over a new development kit from a startup company that's looking to revolutionize the industrial IoT market. The company's name is InPlay and their product is the Nano Beacon IN100. It's a simple Bluetooth beacon platform that can be customized and configured without using any software programming. It supports both iBeacon and Eddystone formats as well as defining your own custom data format to be broadcast by the beacon. Now, if you've ever been involved in developing a Bluetooth low energy device, then you'll know that no matter how simple the device is, you still have to know a lot in order to get started, including firmware development experience, knowledge of the Bluetooth low energy protocol, knowledge of the APIs of the SDK from the vendor of the chipset that you're using or development kit, as well as the software that needs to be downloaded and the tools that are set up on your computer. And with this new platform that requires no programming, the Nano Beacon IN100, you can now design and create a Bluetooth beacon in a matter of minutes without writing a single line of code. Now imagine how powerful this can be, even for the experienced Bluetooth developers among us. In addition to it being programming free, some of its other benefits include being ultra low power and ultra low cost. We're talking under $1, including the packaging and the battery without any external sensors or peripherals connected to it. At this price level, you can imagine how many new applications can take advantage and utilize this new platform in order to provide solutions that were never possible before. The chipset also provides you access to an internal temperature sensor as well as battery voltage reading. And in addition to that, it also provides external sensor interfaces, including GPIO, ADCs, I2C, and a single wire sensor interface. So you can connect pretty much any sensor that you'd like to satisfy the requirements for your application and include the readings from that sensor in the broadcast data that's sent out by the Bluetooth beacon. Active RFID and wireless sensors are the main industries that come to mind that could benefit from using this platform. The way this works is by providing a PC-based application called the Nano Beacon Config Tool that allows the user to configure and customize the data that's included in the advertisement packet sent out by the Bluetooth beacon. Now the IN100 was designed by InPlay from the ground up with this objective in mind to provide a user-friendly platform that requires no programming at all. So the chipset actually does not include a microcontroller, which allows it to be very power efficient and very low cost. But keep in mind that the IN100 supports only transmit mode. So the communication is unidirectional and there's no way to connect to or interact with the Bluetooth beacon over Bluetooth Low Energy. Now that we know a bit more about the IN100 and how it works, it's time to show how it works in practice and how you would get started with developing on this platform as a user. So this is what the packaging looks like when you purchase an EVK set. Then you get three development kits or three EVKs, evaluation kits, and then you also get a programmer board. So the programmer board is used as the interface for programming the tags and the chipset with the customized and configured application based on your use case through the NanoBeacon config tool, that's the PC application. You connect this through a USB cable to the desktop or laptop that you're using and configure through the NanoBeacon config tool, the tag that's running on this board and then be able to operate it using a battery. So here I have the NanoBeacon config tool and I'm going to be running three different examples. The first one will be the iBeacon example. Second one is Eddystone. And the third one is a custom data application or custom data format that we define. Now for the first two, the iBeacon and the Eddystone, I'll be using an application on Android called Beacon Scanner, which will parse the data and provide it in a user-friendly format. So that will be easy to verify that we are getting the data that we configured and that everything is working fine. For the custom data format application and example, we'll be using the NRF Connect on Android to look at the advertising data and look at the custom raw data that is included in the advertisement packets. So the first thing is that I have the EVK connected to a programmer board connected to the USB and to the computer. And the first thing we wanna do is to probe the UART and here it's detected and then I can hit connect. Once it's connected to that device, then I can run in RAM. And this is the option to actually test the application before you burn it to the eFuse on the tag itself. And then 
it will be permanent and then that would be the last step that you would take after testing out your application and making sure everything is running fine. So in order to set the advertising set and configure it, I have to make sure it's enabled. Advertising set one is always enabled and see you have three different advertising sets so you can have the tag actually advertising an iBeacon, an Eddystone, and a custom format all at the same time, alternating between those and but being able to broadcast that data in these three different formats. So let's go ahead and edit. And inside the edit, I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to go to the iBeacon format and hit settings. And I already have a UUID set and I have a major and a minor. Uh, let's just go ahead and change the major. So I'm going to do 1111. For the minor, I'll do 2222. Now keep in mind this is hex. So it will be translated into decimals when we look at it in the beacon scanner application. I'll keep the measure TX power at one meter for iBeacon. Hit OK and that's it. We're actually ready to run this application on the tag. But before that we can look at the raw advertising data and this is a really cool feature. It lets you see all the raw bytes that will be included in the advertising set. Okay, so we'll just hit OK. Sometimes if you had the tag connected from before, you'll just have to reset it. So I'm going to hit the reset button on the EVK and then I'm going to do run in RAM. And that looks like it's fine. Now I'm going to go to the Beacon Scanner application on Android. So here I'm on the application. As you can see, I'm going to hit the play button and it will be discovering an iBeacon. And there it found it. So in this case, we can see that the TX, if we go back to the settings, the TX matched, it's minus 40 dBm. We have other devices that are showing, but we can ignore those for now. So I can actually hit here and add to the block list. I'll keep just the one I'm interested in, but we can see that the UUID matches E2C56, and that matches here in the iBeacon, in the Beacon Scanner application, as well as maybe we look at the last four bytes, nine, six, E0, and we can see it matches as well. The major, if we convert 1111 hex, let's do that. And I'm going to hex and convert 1111. And as you can see, it's 4,369, which matches what we see in the iBeacon advertising data on Beacon Scanner. If I do 2222, you can see it's 8,738, which also matches. So that's how simple it is to actually create an iBeacon device. Um, let's go on to the Eddystone application. So let's hit OK. We can then choose Eddystone, hit Settings. Here we have a few options. We have the measure TX power at zero meters. That's the definition by Eddystone by Google. So we'll just keep that at zero dBm. Um, I'm defining here a 10 byte namespace to be 0011 all the way to 99. We have a six byte instance starting from 1020 all the way to 60. These are six bytes. And then this is the UID frame. So this is an unencrypted frame. If we want to encrypt it, we'll have to decrypt it on the receiver side. And in this case, we're not going to be able to do that using this beacon scanner. We'd have to develop our own application and implement the algorithm for the decryption. So we'll just stick to the UID frame. Now what we can do is actually include what's called the TLM frame. So with iBeacon, it only supports the UID major, minor, and the TX power. With Eddystone, it's a lot more powerful. It includes a TLM frame that you can interleave between different the UID frames. And so you have the IDs that you can display and broadcast as well as enabling TLM, which is for telemetry data. So it includes uh, temperature, the advertising count, as well as the battery voltage reading. So let's go ahead and enable that. The ratio here tells us that for how many UID frames we want to send TLM. So if we set this to one, then every UID frame after it will come a TLM frame and so on. And if you set it to two, then for every two UID frames sent out, we'll have a TLM frame after that. So let's keep it at two. It won't make a huge difference when we see it in the application. Again, I'm going to reset the board now just to make sure that we can run in RAM. So I just reset it. I can run in RAM. Let's look at the phone. I'm going to clear this and 
as you can see here, we found the Eddie Stone UID. So we have an RSSI, we have a TX, we have a namespace which matches the 10 byte right here, 001123. I'm gonna block this one. I'll just keep this one. And then we can also see that the instance ID matches as well. We can see that we actually have the battery reading and this is supplied by the voltage reader, reader from the chipset itself. So it's actually accurate. It's around 3.3 volts. And then we have the temperature, which in, in this room is reasonable. It's 22.4 Celsius. And then we have packets sent, and those are the number of packets sent since reset. So we reset the board, and so it's only at 39 or 40, 41 packets right now. Okay, so the final one we want to look at is the custom advertisement. So there's a lot more videos that go into more, a lot more detail on the Nplay website for how to configure each of these and goes into the, the details of the different fields. But for now, I have, I'm just setting this as a device name so I can find it easily. So I'm only enabling device name. I don't want TX power. And I'm using the manufacturer specific data. These are different fields that are standard per the Bluetooth spec. And user-defined data is a lot more custom data that you can include as well. The 0505 ID matches the in-play company ID per the Bluetooth specification or the, the assigned numbers that are assigned to the different companies that are registered. So when I go in here, as you can see here, I'm going to delete this part. And in fact, I'm going to include the VCC. So if we had this empty, the way we add the data. And you can see here, there's a lot of data that you can include in the advertisement packet. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add the VCC, it takes up one byte, you can append to data, we can add the internal temperature, and that's it. We, now we should be able to see this in NRF Connect. So let me hit OK. I'm going to reset the board again using the reset button, hit run and RAM, and then move over to NRF Connect. In NRF Connect, I actually have a filter for temp so that I don't see any other devices. Um, I had the RSSI, we don't need that since we're filtering by the device name. I'm gonna reset the scan. As you can see, it found it. It can find the, the device. And if I look at it here, you'll see that InPlay Technologies is uh, recognized as the company ID inside the manufacturer data. The local name is temp. And then we have this data. So the first, if we look at the raw advertising data, we can see after the manufacturer specific data and the in-play company ID, we can see we have the VCC, which is one byte. So if we look at here, we can see it's 69 hex, and I'm going to type hex 69, and that matches decimal 105. So per the definition of the value of each unit corresponds to one over 32 volts. So I'm going to divide this by 32, and it gives us the reading at 3 volts. The next one we have, and this is in little Endian format, so keep in mind that the if we see it right now on the screen, it was the last one captured. It stopped scanning, so this is the last data that was read while it was scanning. But let's take that as an example. We have 8C08, so we'll reverse that because it's in little Endian format, so it's 88C. So let's convert 88C from hex and convert it to decimal. So it converts to 21.88 Celsius. So that's it. We can customize as much data as we want in here. We can actually include like just custom data as well. So we can say, let's see. So that's it in terms of the different applications or different use cases that you can. So that's it in terms of a demo of what you can do with the IN100. I mean, this took us like a few minutes. We configured it to be an iBeacon, an Eddystone, and a, include custom data. And it was very simple, required no programming at all. So I hope you found this video helpful. This is a new development kit from InPlay and be sure to check it out at 
www.inplay-tech.com. On their website, they have a lot more information about the evaluation kits where you can purchase them from if you are interested, as well as a lot of video tutorials that guide you through using their application and their Nano Beacon config tool for configuring the IN100. So thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.